Do you remember normal? It was a Monday morning commute. A playground with the kids. Normal was deciding between a booth or a table. But now, normal looks new. New ways to spend our time. New ways we interact with each other. New ways we experience God. Normal changed. Will you? Uh, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have uh, to come together in your house. We pray, Lord, that you, uh, this morning as we always pray, that you open our ears and our hearts and our minds just to hear what you've got to say to us today. So just speak to us through your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was at the clergy conference. Every now and again, there's a, a clergy conference for all the clergy in different regions of the country. So the Leeds Diocese, of which we are a part of, had their clergy conference a couple of weeks ago at Hope University in Liverpool. And I think it was about four years ago since we, we had uh, the previous uh, clergy conference. Obviously, we've had COVID in between, so I suppose that's the reason why. And at that clergy conference, I uh, volunteered in what's known as the marketplace. Um, there's lots of sort of stalls, um, and I suppose selling various things. And I can see what you're thinking now. What was he selling? What was he selling to a group of clergy? What was he selling to a captive audience? And... Um, Good question. I wasn't actually selling anything. What I was selling was a concept, and the concept was the concept of rhythm. And um, that's prompted me to talk about what I want to talk about today. And I want to talk about life when life doesn't seem to be working. And I don't know how you are in your life at the moment, but that seems to come up every now and again, that life just doesn't seem to be working in the sense that we probably hoped it would do. Life when we're too busy to do the things that we want to do. And I'm not just preaching to you guys, I'm preaching to myself. Because at times, I think we all have a problem. We're all rushed people. You know, if you ask somebody that's retired, can they do something next Wednesday? They'll say, just a minute, I'll have to get my diary out. Now, when they were working, they just knew that we were working nine till five or whatever, and you could ask, you know, are you free on a Wednesday evening? They'd say, yeah, that's fine, but now, no, retired people are the most busiest people in the world. And quite often, as, long as, as well as being rushed, I think we're overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that's going on in our lives, anxious at times because of the things that we're thinking about. You know, we worry things out of all proportion. We always think that we've got absolutely loads of things to do, not enough hours in the day. And then we start to ask ourselves, is it possible that I could squeeze something else in? You know, they always say, don't they, if you want a job doing, ask a busy person. And it's true, that's what we do. We ask busy people if they'd like to just do something else. I seem to be busy and people are always asking me, can you just do this? There is a possibility that some people say, oh, we could do things this way and it would save me time. Well, let me tell you this, we can never save time. We can only use time wisely. We can never, you know, it's not like a battery, we can't save it up. And we might want to ask ourselves, well, how could I technically save time but do things in a more um, time-worthy way? And you might be asking yourself this as you're driving down the road. Now, we go to Morrison's and Lidl, which is just down Thornton Road, and I find myself approaching the traffic lights at four lane ends and then working out which lane to be in because which one has got the shortest queue of traffic because I can turn right and then left and I end up at Lidl. I can turn, or I can go straight on and turn right and I end up at Lidl. It's exactly the same. So I work out mentally not even thinking about it. Do I 
try to get in the smallest lane so I can get there in the quickest amount of time and then find myself behind some cars that just decide not to turn right and, I'm, and then all the cars that were going straight past me just go straight past and there they are, they're there before me. But does it really matter? That's the answer that we need to be, um, or the question we need to be asking ourselves, does it really matter? what the outcome is. And then, you know, we get into the supermarket and you've all done it. I know you have. We were in Asda the other day. Well, actually, Asda, we go for the self-checkout because that's quicker, isn't it? You scan all the stuff in your basket, get to the checkout, do it yourself. But if you're going somewhere like Lidl or Aldi's, we were in Aldi's this week buying a lot of stuff for the food bank. And um, it was absolutely manic, absolutely full of people, and then you're dodging, aren't you? And it says, till number three is opening. And everybody, you see everybody go, trying to get to till three, and there's no operator there, because they get the queue all sorted before the operator actually gets there. And then the first person that comes onto the till has got a coupon that doesn't work or something. Do you know? And then we find ourselves multitasking at home, don't we? Who takes their mobile telephone to the bathroom? You're not going to admit this, are you? Some of you take your mobile phone to the bathroom, or take your mobile phone, should I say, to the toilet. You know, checking out your Facebook, doing the emails, sending some messages. In other words, doing the business while you're doing the business. <laughs> should we not go there? We're not rushed occasionally. I think we're rushed all the time in everything that we do in our lives. Rush, rush, rush. We just move on to the next appointment. We rush unnecessarily to the next appointment. And often we find ourselves disappointed with life, thinking that there's something missing because we're too busy. No time to do what we want to do. And life is not supposed to be that way. That's what we start to think to ourselves. Is life really supposed to be this way? Am I supposed to be so busy that I've not got time for things? What if I told you this? And we're going to put the words on the screen so it can sink in. The greatest enemy to the life you want to lead is probably the life that you're already living. Today, I want to give this message the title, The Rhythm of Life. And I suppose this is one of those difficult things to talk about because rhythms involve being fast and slow. You know, there is a rhythm to things. So that's what I want to talk about. And those of you that know me know that I don't really do slow. I seem to be in sort of a high gear all the time. And I just want to get stuff done. That's how I am just want to get stuff done. And I use that word quite often, and Kevin's not with us today, but he's always pulling me up about using the word just. Because when I think something wants doing, I say, oh, we could just do this and we can just do that, because I think it is that simple, as the meerkats would say. It's simples. Can we just do it? And he said, it's not that simple. But I think it is sometimes. Sometimes it might be a little bit more difficult, but we need to think about what we're doing. And I also think that the devil doesn't have a day off, so I need to get stuff done. I just want to get stuff done for God. And hopefully not dysfunctionally, because we need to watch that, don't we? That when we do things quickly, that we become, or we can be, dysfunctional in the way that we do it. And I'm guessing that each and every one of you feels busy. You all feel that way at times. Might be not all the time. You've got you know, things to do, jobs to do, bills to pay, kitchens to clean, kids to raise, news to read, messages to write, gardens to mow, dinners to cook. Who's got the dinner in the oven right now? Oh, we don't need to do that today because we've got a buffet at the back of church. So there we go. Well, you could say, I've saved some time coming to church today. And what about clothes to buy, clothes to wash, clothes to wear, more clothes to buy? What are you all laughing at just because I looked at Michelle? <laughs> Do you know, Michelle's got this lovely dress on today and she has not wearing, she has not forgot to take the label off. Have you? It is barcoded. That's not because she stores them on the right place in the right shelf in a wardrobe. You know, and barcode the one for the day. It's part of design and thing, isn't it? But somebody said to me, has Michelle got a label on her dress? And I says, no, it's supposed to. I said, yes, she has. It's supposed to be there. <laughs> Last time she had it on in church, somebody asked the same question, didn't they? And then we've got photos to take on our phones, haven't we? And then messages to write, captions to write. 
and comments to make. And then what about the TV? We go home, we put the Netflix on, and we've got all those programs to watch. You know, the series is Netflix, Amazon, Britbox, more for. There's just tons of it, isn't there? And what about the things that we think that we don't have time for? Are they not more important? What about deep conversations with friends? What about family meals or meals with family members together? What about days off? What about walks in the park? What about meaningful relationships? And what about our time with God? That's something that sometimes we put on the back burner, isn't it? Because we just don't think we've got time to spend with God. In other words, what matters to us? What are the things that matter to us? Or what are the things that should be mattering to us? Rest, relaxation, reading, seeking God. And what do we say, I just don't have time? Well, let me tell you this, that we all say that. We all say that we don't have time. But what if the greatest enemy to the life that you want to lead is the life that you're already leading? Now, just for a moment, let's just think of some role models that we might find, that we might, you know, cling on to and think, I could be like that. Let me give you a clue who would be the best role model for you. Let's have a look at Matthew 11. And Jesus says these words. He says, walk with me and work with me. He says, watch how I do it and learn the unforced rhythms of grace. You know, your personal rhythm of life can be developed by making some simple steps in the way that we approach life each day. Jesus' ministry was only three years long. And in those three years, he embraced the whole mission of his father. And he recruited a a team of 12 people. He trained them in kingdom values. He endured the hatred of the Pharisees. He resisted the temptations of the devil. He healed all sorts of sick people. He loved all sorts of needy people. And he preached the word fearlessly. And on top of all that, he fulfilled 351 Old Testament prophecies. And you know what? He never ran and he never rushed. He never said, come on, lads, we're behind schedule. I've never read that in the scriptures. He never said that, you know, we're late and we need to make up some time. And he never said to Thomas, come on, you're late again, because he always seemed to be that way. He never ran and he never rushed. In Mark 2, verse 14, it says this. It says, as Jesus walked along, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax collector's booth. And he says, follow me. And Levi got up and he followed him. And that's a talk for another day. But there's something going on here. And you might want to think this through. If Levi followed an unrushed Jesus then Levi should have been living an unrushed life. So if we follow an unrushed Jesus, we should be living an unrushed life too. So if you find yourselves always being rushed and stressed and overworked and overwhelmed and exhausted and trying to get everything done and always falling short because we can't do the things that we want to do, we might just want to remember the words of Jesus that says, come and follow me. And this is a paraphrase from the message version of that same passage. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Then come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. And I won't lay anything heavy upon you or ill-fitting. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. What an offer from Jesus himself to do those things. Jesus says, get away with me and you'll recover your life. Walk with me and watch how I do life. 
Don't just believe what Jesus says in the Bible. What he's saying is, come and have a go. Don't just read it, but do it. You know, Jesus was given 33 years to start a world-changing revolution. And what does Jesus do? He waits 30 years before he gets started. And then out of obscurity, he comes and he goes to the Jordan River and he's baptized with his cousin. And then what does he do? You could say, well, now he's ready. You know, he's waited 30 years to get started and now he goes and spends another 40 days in the wilderness listening to what his father's saying to him. Yes, he had the devil whispering in this ear, but he was in there getting himself ready. And then what does he do? He comes out of the wilderness. Yes, he calls a few people. Then he goes off to a party in Canaan in Galilee because somebody's getting married. Unrushed Jesus. This is who I'm talking about. And then, you know, there's a synagogue leader and, uh, called Jarius, and he says, my little girl's dying. And what does Jesus do? Does he rush? Does he jump on a donkey? You know, the fastest horse he can find? He walks. And as he's walking to Jarius' house, he's confronted by a woman who's been ill for 12 years, and he stops, and he does the business there. And then when he finally gets to where he's going, the girl's died and Jesus says, doesn't matter. We'll just sort it out. And that's what he does. He just sorts it out. You know, apart from being on that donkey riding into Jerusalem, we never hear of Jesus riding. We always hear of him walking, taking his time, that slow pace of life. So you might want to ask yourself, If Jesus was never rushed, then why am I rushed? Why am I running around? Am I running away from something or am I running towards something? Or do I think I'm running towards something? Running from the past, from past failures, from past insecurities, from past hurts, from past abuse. And on the flip side of that, running towards things, running to get married, running to a relationship running to success, running into financial security. But quite often the problem is that those things are earthly and they're not spiritually and they let us down. So what if the greatest enemy to your life, the life that you want to lead, is the life that you're already living? People say to me, but you just don't understand. There's not enough time in the day. But let me tell you this, you always have the time to do the things that you want to do. And the solution is not more time, the solution is that you need to work out what really matters in your life. And the reason we have, or the reason that we don't have enough time is that we mindlessly spend our time on the things that don't matter You know, the average person spends 706 hours a year on social media, 2,700 hours watching those TV programs, and the average young person, 10,000 hours on video games by the age of 21. I think for Joseph, our grandson, that might be more, (laughs) but who knows? You know, in that time, you could put all that time to good use. We could probably read a thousand books, learn to play an instrument, memorize the New Testament, learn a different language. I struggle with English. I don't know about learning a new language, but if I I put my mind to it, I could probably do it. We could get a degree or potentially save a marriage or reconcile a family or mindlessly waste your time on what doesn't matter. So you might be asking the question, well, what can I do? Do I need to slow down? Well, let me tell you this. If you don't slow down, you might be made to slow down. For a few of us, that has happened over the years. We've been made to slow down. Forced, if you like. So let's just recap. Who is God? God is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And the greatest commandment is this that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all my mind, with all our soul, 
and with all our strength. And the second commandment is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And I've said before, how can we love our neighbor if we don't love ourselves? So that's the first question that I've got for you today, or a question that you might want to take away with you. Do you love yourself? And if the answer is yes, then we need to develop a rhythm of life. A rhythm of life that's compatible with who God wants you to be. Because in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, love is patient and love is kind. So let me ask you this, are you patient with yourself? Are you kind to yourself? Are you present in the moment? Are you really bothered? And if you're not really bothered about the, God, the life that God wants for you, well, that's up to you. But I think God would be bothered in the life that he's given you. And he wants the very, very best for you out of that life. Can I just encourage you? Um, I'm going to leave a few of these leaflets around. This is the rhythm of life. This is the diocesan strategy. Um, so either pick up a leaflet or go on to the DLP. And I know some of you will be saying, what is the DLP? The DLP is this diocesan digital learning platform, and you can access it from clicking um, Living, Loving, Learning on our website. If you click on this link on our website, it will take you to the, the digital learning platform, and you can find loads of resources to everything that we put on there from the diocese. Living, loving, learning is the strap line of the diocese. Loving because Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and all your strength. Living because Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. And learning because Jesus says, come and walk with me and see how I do it. So if you're willing and able this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand. Because I just want to give God a little bit of time and space. And I want us to pray a few words. I want the, well, I want to ask the Holy Spirit to work in your lives. And I want to pray this prayer. A few simple words. So let's pray together. God, help us to walk slowly. To experience Jesus fully. And to love people deeply. Let me just say that again so the words soak into our very minds and bodies. God, help me to walk slowly, to experience Jesus fully, and to love people deeply. So just for a moment, just think about Jesus walking. Where was he walking? At the end of his 33 years of ministry, he was walking towards the cross, day by day, step by step, walking towards that ultimate gift he was going to give to you. So let's just pray those, pray those words again. God, help me to walk slowly, to experience Jesus fully, and to love people deeply. Father, help us to say no to what doesn't really matter and to say yes to the things that do. So come Holy Spirit right now, Lord, just speak to us and guide us in these coming days. Guide us to say no to what doesn't matter and yes to what really does. Holy Spirit, we pray to you to ask you to guide us into walking like Jesus, to walk slowly into the things we need to be walking into. And we pray in the very, very strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.